Joining us now is GOP pollster Whit Ayers, founder and president of North Star Opinion Research. Whit, good morning to you. You say this is going to be a challenge for Trump to chip away at the lead Harris has among women voters. What would he have to accomplish here in these next two months to close that gap? Oh, good morning, Marky. It's good to be with you. It helps to view the gender gap in historical perspective. Women have voted for the Democratic candidate for president every single election going back 30 years into the 1990s. Men have voted for the Republican candidate or split more evenly over that time. What's different this year is the prominence of the abortion issue and its critical importance to many women as well as a number of comments that Donald Trump has made over the years about women. The key is, does Trump win men by enough to offset his deficit among women, or does the deficit among women put Harris in the lead? And that's the critical question in various, uh, the various swing states this year. Yeah, and you know that, that recent New York Times seen a poll that I mentioned off the top, it shows Vice President Harris uh, is losing male voters by a bigger margin than she's winning women in key states. Uh, right. The gender cap, gap, to your point, in these parties is not new, but what kind of impact do you really think that could have on this election here in two months? Because of the two factors I just mentioned, the abortion issue and Trump's comments, the historical gender gap could become a gender chasm this year. But it's interesting, the best way to determine what kind of state it is, is to look at the margin among men and the margin among women. If Donald Trump is winning men by more than Kamala Harris is winning women, like in Florida, it's a red state. If she's winning more among women than Donald Trump is among men, it's a blue state. And if they're basically evenly divided, like Georgia right now, exactly evenly divided, it's a swing state. So the best way to determine it is whether or not this comparing the gap between women and men in the various states. And, you know, you bring up uh, abortion issues, uh, women's issues. Is that the X factor here? And if so... Why did that not work for Hillary Clinton back in 2016? I mean, what's different now? Well, what's different now is the prominence of the abortion issue. It was not that big a deal before the Dobbs decision from the Supreme Court. So it was not anywhere near as prominent then. But there was still a gender gap in 2016 as well. Hillary won among women and Trump won among men. Trump just won among men by more than Hillary won among women. And lastly, Whit, before I let you go, how much do you think tomorrow night's debate will play a role in influencing voters' decisions, particularly those who remain undecided right now? It could be critical, depending upon how it goes. Everybody's made up their minds about Donald Trump. There are very few people who don't have a view about Donald Trump. But a great many people are just getting to know Kamala Harris. And a lot of people are waiting to see what she's like as a candidate and the position she takes. So tomorrow night could really be critical for helping to fill in the blanks about Kamala Harris and her image. Well, I'll be watching, as I know you will be as well. Whit Ayers, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.